Right. Let us start with unit 3, the central nervous system. In the previous unit, we looked at neurons and how they communicate with each other. In this unit, we will look at the brain and the spinal cord, which are the parts of central nervous system. The nervous system is responsible for our behaviors and thought processes. As you can see in the figure, the human nervous system has two major divisions, namely the central nervous system or CNS and the peripheral nervous system that is PNS. The central nervous system comprises of brain and spinal cord that works together to make behavior possible. If there is any damage to any part of the spinal cord or the brain, then it causes different kinds of physiological and behavioral problems. The PNS is further subdivided into somatic nervous system or SNS and autonomic nervous system or ANS. The figure in front of you shows nervous system divisions and its functions. Now pause this video and observe this image in front of you. This unit introduces you to the structure and functions of central nervous system. Further, we will discuss how damage to any part of CNS affects our behavior. The other parts of the nervous system will also be discussed in upcoming unit. Now before we proceed, let us see a famous case of brain injury in the case of Phineas Gage. He was a 25-year-old foreman crew in railroad construction company. In 1848, while blowing up rocks to clear the path for rail track, he met with a dangerous accident. A tamping iron rod pierced his left part of the brain, destroying his brain's frontal lobe. Even though he survived this accident miraculously, it had profound ecological consequences. John Martin Harlow the physician who treated Gage after the accident wrote that he is fitful, irreverent, indulging at times in a grotesque vanity which was not previously his custom. So as you can see, his behavior after the accident got changed. After a few years in 1860, he died of epilepsy. It has been suggested that Gage's most important contribution to neuroscience was the recognition that the brain is the physical embodiment of personality and identity. In other words, the brain and the mind are one and the same. He was the first case where you could say fairly definitely that injury to the brain produced some kind of changes in personality.